Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is hints and tips of how to improve your performance in Flight Simulator 2020. A number of my subscribers and viewers of my video seem to be interested in me making this video because I get fairly decent performance with fairly decent settings in Flight Simulator 2020. This is by no means meant to be the ultimate guide. There's too many variables and variety of systems for anybody to do that. But it's my hints and tips with hopes that you can improve your performance in Flight Simulator 2020. So let's get on with this video. Okay, so before I talk about any of the settings of my simulator in detail, look below on the timeline of this video, I've segregated it, so you can jump to which part is most appropriate to you. First thing I'm going to talk about is the hardware, of my current hardware. I'm running my simulator on a 1066 gigabyte, a Ryzen 1600 AF CPU, which gives great bang for the buck for a CPU. I'm running 16 gigabytes DDR4 memory, and I'm running the M uh, the simulator on an M2 drive. Now, the most important aspect of running this simulator for anybody, I would suggest, is running it on either an, an SSD or M2 drive. If you're running this on your ordinary hard drive, so if you're not au fait with computer systems, generally the biggest hard drive in your system will be your ordinary hard drive, your ordinary storage. If you're running Flight Simulator 2020 on your ordinary hard drive, you're going to get pretty poor performance. It's going to be stuttering a lot. Your frames per second will also be affected. One of the biggest upgrades you can make and best upgrades you can make for your computer if you don't already have it is a good SSD drive or simply add, like I did, a couple of M2 drives and that's what I'm running my uh, Flight Simulator 2020 on currently. And it does give you a better performance if you're not running it already on an SSD or M2 drive. For the rest of your system, generally you, you want to be looking at a graphics card, either NVIDIA or AMD, that has around 6 gigabytes memory at least. Like I say, I'm running mine on a 1060, I don't believe you can get hold of them any longer. I believe the 1660 is the new successor to my graphics card. You want to run it at least on that. The better graphics card you can get, or the, the better performance graphics card you can get, the better for Flight Simulator 2020. So you may be looking at the 3000 series NVIDIA cards when they become more available. Everything's difficult to get hold of at the moment, I can appreciate that. But when things do become more readily available, the better graphics card obviously you can buy, the better your performance and the better CPU I would suggest buying a CPU that runs at at least 3.6 megahertz that's what I believe I'm running mine at at least 3.6 if you can get higher performance like 4 gigahertz CPUs with at least four cores, the more cores the better, I believe mine's running at six cores, the better your performance. Okay, so I don't want to go too much into hardware details, the hardware of your system. Like I said before, at least run the simulator on an SSD or an M2 drive and you should see better performance if you're not already running it on one of those types of hard drives. Now let's go to the details of my what I'm running Flight Simulator 2020 in. The actual details within the simulator itself. 
Okay, so obviously press escape in flight to get to options. I'll go to options on your main menu. And we'll go to general. And we'll go to graphics to look at my graphics settings within the simulator. I'm obviously running on a 1080p monitor, so I've got my screen resolution set to 1080p. If you're running at 1440p or 4K, just keep in mind, obviously, these settings are going to be different. And it's depending on your computer system. I'm simply going to run through my settings, and this works well for me. You can change them to similar settings to see if it works well for you. But just keep in mind, your computer system will be different, so it will may more likely roll, run differently on your computer system. What I do recommend doing is taking a screenshot of all your settings. So you, I, for example, I could press print screen there, go into paint in Windows and paste it. Then I'll move this, I'll scroll down so I've got trees. You can see it's on the bottom there. I'll make sure trees is on the top there. Take another screenshot, press print screen and then paste it into something like paint or a paint program and then scroll down again the last page you can see ambient occlusion there if I just scroll down to the bottom that doesn't go to the top so just scroll down to the very bottom take another screenshot so you're taking screenshots of all your settings if you're going to alter them so you don't get worse performance and you can put it back to where it was if it doesn't improve things so let's get on with my settings. I believe the simulator ran me when I first ran it in high end and my frames weren't where I wanted them to be. So I actually put it down to the medium preset settings or the medium settings, global rendering quality settings. And then I altered one of two of these settings. Let's go back. I don't want to apply those settings and go back into my graphic settings again. So this is what I currently run. V-Sync I've turned off. I would recommend that everybody turns that off if unless you've got a supercomputer and you can keep it on. Basically V-Sync, as many of you may know, if you're looking left or right or looking around the world, perhaps in external view, external mode, you may get a bit of teen screen tearing certainly not getting any there but if I'm looking left or right there you can notice a bit of screen tearing it's not too off-putting in flight simulator 2020 and it just generally doesn't really affect your performance and like I said I would recommend fully recommend you keep that turned off and like I said I'll just run through my settings uh, rendering scaling I kept at default on the, the preset sort of global rendering medium quality so that's on 100 terrain level uh, anti-aliasing i've got on the highest level now this can affect your performance if you're having if you've got poor frames so you may be running at 20 to 25 frames a second and you're not happy with that by altering the anti-aliasing so if you put that down one to dlaa i'll apply that i'll change it later and go back to the simulator. Yeah, performance has improved. Or you may find that your frames and performance has improved. But the world looks a bit fuzzy. Graphics certainly don't look as good in that setting. Compared to TAA. So let's put it back to TAA. Which is what I have mine set on. And as you can see, the world around you looks much sharper, much nicer. If you can get away with TAA, I would fully recommend it. If your frames, you're not happy with your frames, you want to increase them, then putting that down to DLAA may improve. But just keep in mind, the way the simulator looks will be affected. Kept all these on the medium settings. So that was on 50. I just kept it at 50. Uh, terrain sorry uh, terrain level of detail and objects level of detail i can increase them slightly it doesn't seem to affect my frames per second too much but they look fine to me on 50 default medium so i've just kept them there as you can see i kept they all these settings here buildings trees grass grass and bushes and terrain vector da data on medium 
The only thing I really altered in all these settings, I put the clouds on high because I prefer the way the clouds look on high and it didn't seem to affect my frames per second too much or my performance too much. And the only other thing I altered in all these settings from the medium default settings was the texture super sampling. I believe that was on 2.2 times 2 under medium settings. You could test that yourself. I've just turned it off. It didn't seem to affect the way the world looks in the graphics, so I just turned it off and I got one or two frames higher. So I'd recommend that if you have that turned on, so you may have it on 2 times 2 or 2 times 4 or 6 times 6 or 8 times 8. Certainly, if you've got it on those higher settings, either dull it down, turn it down, or simply turn it off. I didn't find any performance the way the graphics look. I didn't find any improvements by turning it on. And generally, I'm quite happy with the way it looks with it turned off. Unless you've got it on super high levels, you're not going to find much effect the way it affects the graphics. You're not going to find much of a difference there. Let's go back to my settings once again. So like I said, the majority, majority of the settings I just left on the medium default settings. Like I said, the only thing has changed. I put the clouds to high, didn't seem to affect my settings. And I put texture super sampling, I turned that off. And I got one or two frames per second more than with it on. The rest of them I just kept on the medium default settings. So those are my settings within my flight simulator. Like I said, if you've got a couple of these settings turned on, V-Sync turn it off certainly and you'll find an improvement in your frames per second. Anti-aliasing, if you turn it down, the world's going to look a bit crappier, basically. Uh, so if you can get away with it, keep it on TAA. If you really can't, turn that down and you sh should find your frame frame rates, your frames per second, improving. By the way, to get your frames showing in the simulator, just go to the Developers tab and turn that on. As you can see, I've got mine turned on and apply and save and then you get your frames per second showing up here. If it's still not showing, just go to options on this menu. Once you have developer mode turned on, you get this menu, these, this menu up here, or these menu options rather. Just go to options and click on display frames per second or FPS and it should show you that there. So there you go, those are my settings, and as you can see I'm getting decent performance. I'm actually running the Orbix Singapore Scenery add-on. I'll link my original review I did on this in the top right, and as you can see, I'm still getting decent frames per second even in an add-on scenery package. Let's go now to a couple of other settings which may improve your performance in Flight Simulator 2020. Okay, so the next setting I'm going to show you is certainly up for debate in the flight sim community. Works for some people, for others it doesn't and it degrades their performance. For others it improves their performance. For me it's improved my performance. What it is, it's a rolling cache. So if I go to escape, to go to options, go to general, go down to the data tab in general. Scroll down, at the bottom here you'll see rolling cache. I've allowed an, a 10 gigabyte allowance for my rolling cache in Flight Simulator 2020. You can set this to whatever gigabyte number you have. Just keep in mind on your hard drive it will take that allowance. And you'll see that on your hard drive you'll have, in this case, 10 gigabyte less than I used to have. It's enough for one or two areas. And in this case I'm flying over London on World Update 3. I noticed that my performance in this area, as you can see, I'm getting slightly less performance than I do in other areas. It's because there's a heck of a lot to stream in here, a lot of buildings. I found relying on the Asobo servers could give me problems. And in fact, I would get a warning that it couldn't keep up on time. Sometimes you get that photogrammetry warning that, you know, it's not keeping up. Do you want to turn it off? or just ignore. By having the rolling cache on, I find if I fly over this area, like I do, I fly over London quite a few times, it improves my performance in this area. 
I'm not relying on the service to stream over that data as much. And generally, my performance improves in this area by having that rolling cache on. Give it a try. Like I said, it's a bit of hit and miss. You can see there's a lot going on there to my left. Still roughly hitting that 30 though, so I'm quite happy with that. And generally, like I said, for me, it does improve my performance as long as I'm flying over this area quite a few times, which I do. If I'm flying multiplayer or flying elsewhere in the world, flying all over the world, I'll turn that rolling cache off because I find generally it can degrade performance. My computer's having to work a little bit harder when it, with it on. But if I'm flying over the same area, like London here quite a few times, performance generally improves with it on. So keep that in mind. So let's now go to a different setting which may improve your performance in Flight Simulator. Okay, so for this next setting I've had to put my display mode in Windows so I can show you this. I'm going to go down to the taskbar here. I'm going to find my NVIDIA icon. Now, if you're using an AMD card, obviously this may not work for you, or there may be similar settings. Go and uh, Google, go on searching Google for a different uh, video on AMD graphics card settings, but I'll show you the NVIDIA settings. I'll find the icon, right click on it, and go to NVIDIA control panel take a second or two to load up and ensure that you're on manage 3d settings so if you're not on that just left click on it and then in here manage 3d settings go to program settings and ensure here that your flight simulator is selected in this drop down box here if you can't find flight simulator run flight simulator then exit come out of it run this so go to your nvidia control panel go to add and in recently used here sort by recently used you should find flight simulator select it and simply add selected program mine's already showing so that's okay i've not altered many of these settings i've left most of them at default the only ones i did alter if you scroll down here go to power management mode like I say, depending on what graphics card you're using, try and find a similar setting. And I put it on prefer maximum performance. And the only other one, texture filtering quality. Again, you get different options here. I think by default it's put it at quality. I've just put it to high performance. The rest of the settings I've left at default, just those two, I've changed to prefer maximum performance or high performance to get as much performance out of the simulator as possible i won't apply that and i'll change that back to full screen keep changes apply and save i've just applied that i'm pretty sure but never mind go back to resume so there you go that's my video of my settings like i mentioned at the beginning of the video there's no diff definitive guide on how to improve your performance in Flight Simulator 2020. There's videos like mine that may help and altering settings to the way I've showed you may help you and then again it may not. It's all dependent on your computer system and how you run it. Basically on your settings and what you have installed in your computer. But give these settings a try. Let me know your thoughts below. If it's been helpful, give the video a like. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon.